welcome students welcome for the fourth day class it's a gate class organized by uh, gct coimbatore under tech cube 3 so uh, the year all the government colleges students are participated and uh, government aided college students for, from mechanical department are participated and the menti institution uh, also participated that is uh, gc jagadalpur and uh, uh, government engineering college jagadalpur and uh, uh, nit arunachal pradesh so welcome all the students for this fourth day session now we are handling the metal cutting and machining process so in the metal cutting machining process we are discussing the questions and concepts now we will move to the questions yes now we are going to see a question which is hss what do you mean by hss it is high speed steel it is high speed steel i speed steel high speed steel so for high speed steel the ratio is 18 is to 4 is to 1 usually this 18 is tungsten and the 4 is chromium and 1 is vanadium so this is the thing we had known already so now the question is in hss the tungsten can be substituted by so it is they are asking for tungsten which has to be substituted by the element molybdenum so it is the right option molybdenum is the right answer now we are going to see a important concept what is that concept it is super hss super high speed steel so compared to high speed steel super hss so for high speed steel w will be more for super high speed steel so vanadium will be more so here the option is c the next question we are going to see is in high speed tool material the element tungsten can be completely replaced this is also the repeated question without changing the material property what is that it is molybdenum we have seen this question previously okay so with the help of molybdenum we can replace the tungsten without changing the properties so we are having tools and their futures so turning tool is related to the side relief angle reamer reamer is related to flutes reamers and drill bit are, we are having the flutes and the milling cutter in milling cutter we can have axial relief so these are the main features in turning tool we are having side relief angle and reamer and drill bit we are having flutes milling cutter axial relief is there so option is c now we are going to discuss about the cutting tool material cutting tool material used for turning steel of high hardness so normally for normal steel we can use the high speed steel for cutting tool material turning steel with high hardness the always best option is tungsten carbide we can go for tungsten carbide for high hardness we can go for tungsten carbide next the question we are going to refer is cemented carbide cutting tool we are we are going to discuss about the cemented carbide cutting tools this cemented carbide cutting tools are made by powder metallurgy process what is the process it is a manufacturing process powder metallurgy process so the cemented carbide cannot able to bond with each other each part the cemented carbide particle are not able to stick with together so for that purpose we are using the binding material what is the binding material the binding material is cobalt the binding material is cobalt so cobalt means it will connect we know that cobalt symbol is co it connect it make the binding yes we are having the turning operation here feed rate and nose radius are doubled surface finish height of unevenness formula is f square by 8 r so what they are doing the feed is increased by two times and nose radius increased by two times so automatically the value will be 2 by f square 8 r so it will be increased by two times this h will be increased by two times so 
in a turning operation both the feed rates or and nose radius are doubled the surface finish value so height of unevenness the height of une unevenness will increase by two times so height of uneven means unevenness increase by two times means the surface finish the surface finish is inversely proportional to the height of the unevenness surface finish it is a wicket taking question so easily the student may put it may be height is increased by two, two, two things and they will go for option increase by 300 and 100 but 200 is not there so a right of unevenness in, inversely proportional to surface finish so automatically it decreased by surface finish decreased by 50 percentage so that is the surface finish decreased by half times so half means 50 percentage so option a is right now we are having the good we want good surface finish for whatever may be the machining operation we want good surface finish what is the condition to get the good surface finish we want good surface finish what is the condition so feed rate should be low remember for less feed good surface finish and the speed should be high so here we are having two dash low and i so low feed and i speed gives good surface finish now we are having the question h equal to h equal to f square by 8 or this surface roughness is given so height of the unevenness is 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6. So it is millimeter, so minus 3. So F they are asking. Nose radius is 1.8. So we have to find out feed. It is a direct formula. You can get after substituting the value, you can get 0 0.268 millimeter per revolution. So it is a h is the height of the unevenness and f is the feed r is the nose radius the turning operations here the question is turning operation in turning operation what we need surface finish improve surface finish we are going to improve we have to increase the surface finish by decreasing the following among these following parameters we have to decrease the parameter to get the good surface finish so cutting speed increase good surface finish rake angle increase good surface finish nose radius increase good surface finish so only only odd man out is feed for low feed the surface finish will be good and remaining parameter all the parameter are increasing by increasing the parameter we can get the good surface finish so here the option is b now we are having the question about the height of uneven peak to valley height it is equal to f square by 8 r so what they are doing radius is given and uh, feed is given uh, what they are asking if the feed is doubled so feed is going to double what is the factor they are increasing so when we double the feed so factor is it is four times four times four times this value first of all it will be f square by 8 r so f square by 8 r will be increased by four times so the factor increased when the feed is increased two times height of peak to valley height increased by four times so feed is increased by two times height of unevenness will be increased by four times because both are both are directly related so here height of unevenness is asking so we know that We have to use this formula here you should when whenever this formula can be used 
so they have to mention neglecting nose radius so neglecting nose radius we have to use this formula to get the answer you can substitute the value and get the answer so here side cutting edge angle is 30 degree and end cutting edge angle is 10 degree and the feed is 1 mm per revolution so uh, when you substitute these values you can get the answer so whenever they are going for side cutting edge angle and the end cutting edge angle we have to use this formula by using this formula you can get the you, you should neglect the nose radius in some problem they may mention neglect the nose radius in some other problem they may not mention whenever they are give, providing these two values you can use this formula otherwise the formula we are having when we consider the no nose radius so we have to use this formula by considering the nose radius we have to use that formula without neglecting the nose radius we have to use this formula so now we are having the question tanning of low carbon steel with titanium coated carbide insert so carbide insert is as a tool and low carbon steel is the work material this is work material this one is the tool material so the surface finish our objective is to improve the surface finish we have to improve the surface finish that means height of the unevenness should be reduced so height of the unevenness should be reduced so it can be made by increasing the nose radius increasing the nose radius increasing the feed and reduce the nose radius what happen it will increase height of the unevenness decrease the nose radius height of the unevenness here also so increasing feed is there so it will increase the height of the unevenness but here increasing nose radius it will decrease the height of the unevenness so option b is right So our objective is better surface finish. In this question, we want better surface finish. So it is possible with the large rake angle. When rake angle increase, surface finish will be good. Height of unevenness will be less. So we know that. So what is the reason behind that? That is the case. Here area of shear plane decreases. So AS area of shear plane decreases. Resulting in the decreasing the shear force. And as well as cutting force. So these are three actions that take place when we increase the rake angle. When we increase the rake angle, area of contact, area of shear force area of shear plane will decreases and then shear force also decreases cutting force also decreases so option a is the right answer a is the right answer now we are having the shaping problem in shaping problem we are having 60 degree symmetrical v tool is used in shaping 0.1 mm depth of cut and uh, feed is 0.1 mm per stroke so what happens so we are having we cut the v like this so what they are giving this is 0.1 mm this length is from year to year 0.1 mm and the total angle include angle is 60 degree so we can take the off take the off means so it is off one so it is 0.05 off angle is 30 degree so this tan 30 equal to tan 30 equal to opposite opposite is 0.05 and this is the adjacent ab we have to find out the theoretical peak to value height so peak to value height is this ab is the peak to value height when you calculate the formula you can get 0 0.086 
microns so it is a the val value in mm is 0 0.086 you can it is simple formula it is tan alpha trigonometry formula but it is a v angle is a included angle we have to take the semi included angle and uh, it is 0 0.05 it is half of the distance so we can take by using the simple formula we can calculate this shaper problem So this is the Whitworth uh, quick return mechanism. Why this Whitworth quick return mechanism is used to get the return stroke quick. We have to get the return stroke quick return stroke. Okay, compared to forward stroke return no cutting so it has to come faster. But the question is the velocity of ram is maximum when, when the velocity of ram is maximum it will be maximum at the middle of the return stroke so when it is this is a forward stroke and when when we come the return stroke so at the middle of the return stroke the velocity is maximum so this is a return stroke and this one is the forward stroke in the return stroke the middle of the return stroke the velocity is maximum so this is a wicket taking question for this question 90 percentage of students make the answer wrong why the question is asked for shape permission whenever there is a shape permission they always think that they make the Whitworth mechanism as the answer so that is wrong so here the question asked this it is for feed for feed we have to use the ratchet and Paul mechanism we have to use the ratchet and Paul mechanism for feed this Whitworth mechanism is used for quick return it is quick return only it is used it is not for the feed for feed we have to use ratchet and Paul mechanism now we are going to discuss the characters of milling operations this is, this is a question asking about the characters of milling operations in horizontal milling process we are having two types of milling one is up milling and another one is down milling this up milling is the conventional milling and the down milling is the climb milling so among these things we have to compare the variables for this question so better surface finish for better surface finish we can go for down milling for longer tool life that also down milling so first of all we should know about the difference between up milling and down milling up milling is a process in which the cutter is rotate opposite to that of feed direction this is the feed direction this is the rotation direction so feed direction is opposite to that of rotational direction so it is called as up milling and uh, for the same thing when the feed direction and the rotational direction are on the same when feed and the rotational direction move in the same direction then the process is called as down milling opposite means up milling so up milling down milling in up milling the workpiece is thrown so we should need the better eye clamping force in down milling the clamping force will be less because it hold the cutter itself hold the workpiece so in up milling what happens in up milling what happens the initial thickness is less and the final thickness thickness is more so because of that improper surface finish improper surface finish improper surface finish but in down milling initially chip thickness will be i and goes on decrease so surface finish will be good so this is the reason behind the this question so concept you have to remember is down milling gives a good surface finish up milling gives a less surface finish 
even though we are using up milling only because in down milling it is a one error is there backlash eliminator occurs backlash eliminator occur in down milling so because of that this down milling is suited for only new machines not for old machine up milling normally we are using in milling operations so this is the question about the milling cutter it has the eight teeth it rotate at the 150 rpm and it it feed for tooth is 0.1 mm per tooth so they are asking the speed in mm per minute speed in mm per minute so what we can get so it is z into n into f z you can multiply all those value you can get 120 so option a is right answer so we are having plain milling operations so plain milling operation of mild steel plates so what are the types of chips can be produced so it is regular shaped and uh, discontinuous chips it is a regular shaped discontinuous chips can be produced in the plain milling of mild steel plates okay so this is uh, another problem we are using the same formula so feed is nothing but it is number of teeth and uh, feet per tooth and uh, so here they are asking feet per tooth so we have to find out this and this one is given 40 mm per minute z is given 8 so we can strike out it is 5 and n is given n is 100 rpm n is 100 rpm so we are using here in the unit this is number of teeth no no need to worry this is rpm revolution per minute so here also we no need to worry and uh, this is 40 mm per minute so we can get it is 5 mm 40 we can get 5 5 divided by we have to divide by 100 5 divided by 100 it is 0 0.05 so it is not 5 it is 0 0.05 mm so that is the thing we have to divide divide it by 100 so this is the answer so we are having the question match so why there is chatter is there what is the reason behind the chatter chatter occur due to the lack of rigidity in machine when the machine we are using is not rigid the machine will vibrate chatter chatter will take place so lack of rigidity machines and fixture bars whatever may be the lack the rigidity reduce rigidity is less means chatter will there and poor surface finish poor surface finish is caused by the high feed when the feed is high the surface finish will be less and the cutter burr when the cutter will make cutter burrs the small it will turn into small burr will be produced cutter burr so it will be the reason of eye cutting load cutter will burr due to the eye cutting load so our option is b and d option built up edge is formed when the built up edge continuous chip with built up edge is formed the continuous chip with the built up edge is formed due to the insufficient lubricant so this built up edge is formed due to the insufficient lubricant so our option is b it is due to the insufficient lubricant this is the indexing problem a gear with 84 teeth is to be machined using a milling process with indexing the index plate has the following four wall circle so index plate is nothing but it is a plate with a number of holes it is a plate with a number of holes so we are having four different plates one plate has 36 volts another plate has 38 volts 
the next plate has 42 volts and 48 volts the change gear ratio is required for change gear ratio change gear ratio the formula is 40 divided by number of teeth so it is 40 divided by 84 when you strike when you strike it so you can get 40 divided by is 10 this is 421 so we can choose 10 by our index change gear ratio is 10 by 21 so option b is right so now you are, you are seeing the index plate it will be like this index plate a plate with number of volts so now we are milling cutter problem so they are asking about the t max it is the ratio of maximum uncut chip thickness so t max is it is 2f by n is at small d by capital d small d by capital d so here it is the, the two separate milling cutter one and two are performed with identical milling cutter the depth of cut in operation two is twice the of is twice the of in the operation one so we eliminate all the variables we take only depth of cut so it is like this so t1 by t2 t max 1 by t max 2 equal to square root of d1 by d2 so what happened it will be increased by two times so here it is one means two so one by root two it is 0 0.7 seven times so here it, there uh, in operation the ratio of this asking so it is the answer is 0 0.707 so remaining they have mentioned that remaining all the variables are the other cutting parameter are identical so we have to eliminate all the other cutting but feed speed and number of teeth and dia so we eliminate all the parameter we are taking only depth of cut so it is directly proportional to depth of cut so t max 1 by t max 2 equal to 1 by root 2 so 1 by root 2 is nothing but 0 0.707 yes we are having the angle between the face and flank the angle between the face and flank is can be called as lip angle so lip angle is the angle between the face and uh, flank so face and uh, flank the face is uh, the angle between the face and flank is called as lip angle the next question we are going to see is in single point thread cutting tool ideal we have zero rake angle so for single point cutting tool for thread cutting for thread cutting operation we have having zero rake angle so now we, we have already seen these questions and uh, we are once again recap the straight grade consists of tungsten carbide only the straight grade consists of tungsten carbide and uh, uh, tungsten carbide only straight grade and the crater wear is predominant in tungsten carbide tools and uh, here the we are having for titanium the measurability will be poor and the mild steel measurability will be i the primary tool force is the tangential force the primary tool force is the tangential force which of the following factor are directly measured by the strain gauge so it is a strain gauge measurement strain gauge is used for measuring cutting force those devices are called as dynamometer dynamometer is a device to measure the cutting force so here what are the forces measured with the help of strain gauge so it is horizontal cutting force we can measure by the tool and work piece and uh, friction resistance cannot be measured vertical force can be measured force exerted by the tool on the chip acting normal to the face cannot be measured so option is and four so we can measure the horizontal force exerted by the tool on the workpiece okay and vertical force which helps in the holding the tool in position so both the horizontal force and vertical force can be measured with the help of dynamometer we are having spindle speed the spindle speed can be have certain range that all the spindle speed are in the series of geometric progression so it will be 50 150 450 like that so it will be in the gp 
okay spindle the in we have we have designed the gearbox in gearbox also the we are following the same thing the spindle speed variation makes a geometric progression next is indexing of turret so we are having turret lathe that after finishing the one operation it will move like this so what what it makes that movement it is the geneva mechanism geneva mechanism is used for intermittent motion intermittent motion so this geneva mechanism can be used for intermittent motion we are having two questions in sign gauge dynamometer the use of how many active gauge marks the dynamometer more effective how many active strain gauge so this is active gauge the active gauge effective for effective we have to use four strain gauges and uh, for increasing the MRR, our objective is increasing the MRR. To increase MRR, what is the right sequence to adjust the cutting parameter? What are the right sequence of adjusting the cutting parameter? First, we have to adjust the depth of cut and the next uh, feed, the finally speed. So, it is the sequence of adjusting. So, it is the sequence of adjusting. First, depth of cut, next feed, next speed. So, for increasing the MRR. So we are having turret lathe here. So turret lathe, sir, the lathe machine with turret. So turret lathe. Turret lathe can turn a piece of limited length. Why limited length? So that is the question mark. Why? What is the reason behind the limited length? So turret cannot work on a long job. So that is the answer. So it cannot work on a long job. So because of the limit, uh, the reason for limited length is turret cannot work on a long job. So we are having planning operation problem here so we are moving to the planning machine so planning machine so planners uh, use the reciprocating tool it use the reciprocating tool here the work table work table reciprocate and the tool stationary that is a planner for planner we should remember these things and uh, we are having it is the 2000 mm length so we have to we have to find out the we have to find out the time time equal to length by stroke so we are having 2000 2000 mm and uh, number of stroke it is 10 double stroke 10 double stroke means 10 into 2 20 20 strokes per minute so we have to divide by 20 you can strike out you can get b it is a 100 minutes so when it is double stroke you have to convert into double stroke means forward stroke and so you have to convert into into 2 so when you convert it into 2 the 10 double stroke will be 20 stroke per minute 10 double stroke per minute it is equal to 20 stroke per minute so you can get 20 2000 by 20 100 minute the material most commonly used for manufacturing machine tool beds so it is a machine tool beds so we are having different machines those machines are made up of some material it is a gray cast iron why gray cast iron it has the high damping capacity so what do you mean by damping I damping capacity what do you mean by damping it is the ability to absorb the shock and the vibration so it absorb shock or vibration so it is the ability of the gray cast iron so for machine tool bed mostly we are using gray cast iron that is also closed grain structure closed grain structure gray cast iron gray cast iron so this is the exact thing okay here gray cast iron is the answer so we are having two types of chuck one is three jaw chuck and another one is four jaw chuck so what is this three jaw chuck doing all the jaws are move concentrically 
so this trija check can be used it is self centered self centered means all the jaws of the check moves simultaneously so it is used to hold regular shaped job so here we are going to hold odd shaped work piece so odd shaped work means it is irregular when it is irregular we can go for four jaw check for casting work piece and the irregular work piece we can go for four bar check and we are having magnetic check also magnetic check is used for mass production when the machine is used for mass production instead of normal check we can go for magnetic check and we are having collet check collet check is used for for holding slender rods lengthy rods collet check is used for slender rods magnetic check is used for mass production magnetic check is used for mass production magnetic check is used for mass production so if the diameter of hole is subjected to considerable variation so we are having considerable variation then for locating the jigs fixture the pressure type of locator used is so variation and there is a variation we always preferable for conical locator conical locator is used for considerable variation diameter is considered the locating purpose we are using the conical locator we are having jigs and fixture the work piece with rough unmachined surface can be located in a jig and fixture by three support on three supporting points yes true a work piece with rough unmachined surface when the work piece has rough unmachined surface it can be supported by three supporting pins so indexing is made accurate by supporting on three points no this reason is wrong so it is not accurate so we are uh, making some relations uh, to hold the pins so it is not accurate so option c is correct a is true but r is false so it is not accurate so we can eliminate the option for reason so our c is correct so now we are going to now we are going to discuss the diamond pin location this diamond pin locator what is the advantage is used in fixture so it takes care of any variation in center distance between two holes there may be some variation between the center distance between two holes this diamond pin locator take care so because of that this diamond pin locator is used in the fixture jack pin v locator bushes ejector so uh, the jack pin can be used to locate the work piece whose dimensions are subjected to variations this v locator to locate the circular and semi circular object and the bushes bushes are used for to guide bushes for guiding the drill bit ejector ejector means easy removal ejector means easy removal of the piece from the jig or fixture after the machining operation so when the machining operation is completed it can be easily removed by ejector so these are the things so jack pin is used for to locate the work piece whose dimensions are subjected to variations following sets of elements are quick acting clamping elements of fixture quick acting elements for fixture quick acting elements for fixture so it is a quick acting clamping elements so what are the quick acting clamping element so we are having wedge cam toggle among that cam and toggle are quick acting wedge is rejected so option b is right so cam and toggle are the quick acting clamping elements 
we are having locating pins and bushes we are having locating pins and bushes for locating pin and bushes what are the important property so it should not wear so it should have high wear resistance it should have high wear resistance locating pin should have the high wear resistance so with the help of high wear resistance it has to be selected so it is for bushes and locating pin this wear resistance will be significant for bushes and locating pins so according to the principle of location of jigs and fixture how many degrees of freedom are to be eliminated body in a space so we should eliminate the body in space it has to be 5 degrees of freedom has to be eliminated in body in space next we are going to talk about the bushes why the bushes are used bushes are used to guide the tool bushes bushes are used to guide the tool so option b is right next we are going to discuss is the important thing is the complexity of jig and fixture the complexity of jig and fixture can be found out by number of pieces that may be produced so whether it can be and the degree of accuracy it is required and number and kind of machining operations so number of machining operations so all the three are important so machining operation so workpiece number of workpiece and number of machining operations and degree of accuracy so all the three are important so the answer is one two three this option d the complexity of jigsaw fixture can be determined in this way so it can be determined by number of workpiece and number of operation machining operation and the number of uh, it is a degree of accuracy we are maintaining we are having the velocity relationship in metal cutting it is a derivation so we are having three velocities here v is the cutting velocity this one is the cutting velocity and vs is the shear velocity and vc is the chip velocity or flow velocity so i am going to shade the tool so this is this one is the tool wedge shaped tool the so chip will flow at an angle this vertical angle the angle made by the this is the rake face this is the flank the angle made by the rake face is called as rake angle to the vertical surface it is a vertical is here and it is amount of deviation so we can get the rake angle so the chip will flow along the face rake face the chip will flow along the rake face so now we are going to found out the relation between the thing by sign include each velocity is a proportional to sign of the included between other two so v is directly proportional to sign 90 minus pi minus alpha that is we can say that v proportional to cos pi minus alpha cos pi minus alpha and uh, so we are having here and v c the ship velocity is proportional to sin pi chip velocity is proportional to sin pi and shear velocity is proportional to cos alpha shear velocity is proportional to cos alpha when you remove the proportionality you have to put the constant so by keeping the same constant v by cos pi minus alpha equal to vc by sin pi equal to vs by cos alpha so when you know any two velocity or angles you can find the other velocity so v is the cutting velocity vc is the chip flow velocity and vs is the shear velocity it will be come like this so v so the angle angle in between the v is so this is pi minus alpha so it will be like that okay and uh, vc if it is vc means so this angle is 
phi and if it is v as here it is alpha so we should know that here it is 90 minus alpha so here is 90 minus alpha so this angle is 90 minus alpha this angle is 90 minus pi minus alpha 90 minus phi minus alpha so we so based on this diagram we can calculate the velocity relationship so this is the formula which may be useful to solve many problems so if you know the angle pi alpha this is here angle this one is a rake angle if you know the and we we should know the vvc any variable can be easily found out so among the five variables any four variables should be given one of the variable may be asked in the exam this is the velocity relationship of the metal cutting operations orthogonal metal cutting operations so we have to find the relation between the cutting velocity chip velocity and shear velocity now the topic of discussion is unconventional machining operations so we are going to see some of the concept which are familiar in unconventional machining operations so we will see one by one the first thing the first characteristic features of the electrochemical machining is in electrochemical machining no tool wear is there so it is the important future of the electrochemical machining for electrochemical machining there is no tool wear the next concept we are going to discuss is we are having different uh, unconventional machining is there electrochemical machining ultrasonic machining electro discharge machining electron beam machining among these what are the specific future in electrochemical machining we are using electrolyte so salt solution is one among the electrolyte uh, in you uh, ultrasonic machining in ultrasonic machining we are using abrasive slurry so we are using the abrasive slurry the sonotrode is vibrate and uh, remove the material in ultrasonic machining in electro discharge machining the dielectric is used dielectric is used in the electro discharge machining so one among the dielectric is kerosene and uh, for electron beam machining can be done in the atmosphere of vacuum only because electron cannot able to move in the open atmosphere when the any dust particle is there the electron will collide and uh, it deviate the path so it is not able to achieve so it has to be done in vacuum now we are going to discuss about the application point of view so dies are made by die sinking operation can be achieved by electro discharge machining and the deburring for deburring operation we are using abrasive jet machining and the fine wall drilling in a thin material whenever there is a thin material in thin material this fine wall can be produced by laser beam machining L-beam is the laser beam machining. Cutting and sharpening of odd material. Any odd material, the cutting or sharpening can be achieved by electrochemical grinding. Next, we are going to see about the electrochemical grinding. In electrochemical grinding, which one is used as a cathode and what, what is going to be used as anode? So, workpiece is used as anode and the copper bonded alumina grinding wheel act as a cathode. So, the metal removal action can be achieved by electrolysis process. So, these are the, some of the significant features in electrochemical grinding. We know that in EDM we need dielectric, we need dielectric fluid and one more thing we should remember, one more thing it, it can be, machining can be done only for the conducting material, conducting material and LBM, this LBM is used for micro hole drilling, micro hole drilling we know that micro hole drilling and uh, for thin plates here the requirement is ruby rod is required in ECM we know that electrolysis is the need of the ECM and uh, in USM it can be done by, by, by with the help of abrasives and 
it suited only for brittle material this usm is suited only for brittle material so these are the important features for the different process now we are going to some of the characteristic features of the different unconventional machining process the first one is edm so edm is suited for making dies so it is cemented carbide dies and punches can be made lbm is always used for micro drilling and it can also be used for micro welding and usm usm is suited for brittle material so when you want to make a holes in the brittle material the ultrasonic machining is desirable and electrochemical machining the perfect contour can be obtained in electrochemical machining so shaping of hard metals reshaping of cemented carbide tools can be achieved by electrochemical machining yes we are having edm in edm the tool selection is important thing we have to select when we go for low wearing tool material the tool is made up of the material it is a silver tungsten or copper tungsten so this w is the tungsten silver tungsten or copper tungsten in ultrasonic machining how the material is removed what is the material removal rate action what is the principle behind that yes that is the point we want to know so in ultrasonic machining we are having transducer this transducer convert electrical energy into mechanical energy electric energy into mechanical energy where abrasive particles are there this mechanical energy impinge on the mechanical energy impinge on the when it is vibrate this is vibrate so what happens that mechanical energy is converted into hammering action it is converted into hammering action this hammering action this hammering action is used to remove the material this hammering action is used to remove the material so with the help of hammering action of the abrasive particles the material removal rate is achieved so we are having three concepts in edm so we which you are going to observe now so what is the concept here resistance increases mrr decreases so that is the first graph we are going to observe the second graph capacitance increases capacitance decreases capacitance decreases or capacitance increases what happen the mrr mrr increases capacitance increases mrr increases here electrode gap electrode gap increases mrr increases and reach the certain value after it reach the optimum and then further electrode gap increases mrr decreases so these are the three significant features which we had observed in the electro discharge machining next we are going to know about the significant future of the unconventional machining okay the unconventional machining as we are applying the energy it may be different forms of energy energy may be in different forms energy may be in different forms so it can be directly applied to the workpiece so it can be directly applied to the workpiece to get a shape or contour this is the to get a perfect shape or contour so this is our objective so it is directly the energy may be transferred in the different form to the workpiece and it get the shape so the second point we have to remember is in unconventional machining the workpiece and the tool does not have contact with each other no contact no contact so these are the two significant characteristics of the unconventional machining we are having metering holes we are going to create metering holes in injection nozzle in diesel engine so what is the process we are going to select we can select electron beam machining this is the process 
which are used for metering holes in the injection nozzle in diesel engine. The USM may not be suitable for this. Why? Because it depth, it depth and it depth is less. The hole produced, the hole produced by using USM, the depth will be lesser. So it this may not be suitable. So EBM is the right option. Now we are going to discuss about the ultrasonic machining. So in ultrasonic machining, which is suitable only for brittle material, we already know that it's suitable for brittle material, brittle material. So aluminum ductile, steel rejected, super alloy rejected, it is refractory material. The U ultrasonic machining is suitable for refractory material because refractory material is brittle. Now we are having plasma arc machining. What do you mean by plasma? Plasma is the ionized gas. So when we pass the plasma on the surface, so it, it can be used for machining. So in that plasma arc machining, we should know that the plasma can be produced 33,000 degrees Celsius. So in that metal removal rate efficiency should be high. The plasma arc machining future is, the metal removal efficiency is high. So we are having EDM. In EDM, the tool is always cathode and work is always anode. If work material and tool material are same, then more erosion take place on anode. More erosion take place on anode. If both are takes place anode. So because of that, the tool is act as a cathode and work is an anode. When the material, both the material are same, more erosion take place at the anode to form the surface. The unconventional machining has a unique feature. So for it can be used for even eye strength alloy because both work and tool are not in contact. So the strength, the eye strength alloy can be easily machined using the unconventional machining and it produces the eye accuracy and it produces a good surface finish and even any complex surface can be easily machined with the help of unconventional machining. In electrochemical machining, we are having the formula for metal removal rate ZI divided by V F rho that is equal to EI by F rho where E is the Z by V. What are the terms, different terms in this formula? Z is the atomic weight, I is the current, V is the valency, F is the Faraday constant, rho is the density. So among these, see MRR depends on the following five variables. Abrasive jet machining, the material removal occurs, the material removal action occurs as the, due to the mechanical impact. It is purely due to the mechanical impact of the abrasive particles. So this MRR action will be take place by mechanical impact. This is the second subject after engineering mechanics we are discussing about metal cutting and machining operations. So in the metal cutting and machining operation this is the fourth day. In fourth day we have covered all the machining process and machining time calculations uh, with unconventional machining applications and unconventional machining principles. So these are the things which has covered in the metal cutting and machining operations. So if you practice all the questions that that we had discussed in the metal cutting and machining operation. It will be useful for all the competitive exams such as GATE, IES and ISRO. Whatever may be the exam, you can easily crack the exam. So these are the important tips you should remember. So whenever, don't memorize the fact, you should make it as memory. When you make it as memory, that won't be erased. It will be useful for the any exam you can easily face the exam and get the success. Thank you.